The Honorable Philip Davis, Deputy Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and Minister of Works and Urban Development. Minister of Financial Services, Bahamas, the Honorable Ryan Pinder. Minister of Investments, Bahamas, the Honorable Kalis Roll. The Honorable Darcy Boyce, Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, Barbados. The Honorable Mark Vanderpool, Minister of Communication and Works, British Virgin Islands. The Honorable Oslin Savinger, Minister of Integration, Infrastructure and the Environment, Aruba. The Honorable Renwood Wells, Member of Parliament and Parliamentary Secretary. Other government officials and esteemed speakers, specially invited guests, my colleagues from our parents CIBC and our colleagues at CIBC First Caribbean, members of the local and international media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the shores of New Providence, one of the many islands of the beautiful Bahamas, and to the world acclaim Atlantis Hotel Paradise Island. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if it's your first time visiting our country, we hope that you won't limit your Bahamas experience to this conference, but will find some time to sample some of what the islands of the Bahamas has to offer. I'm extremely pleased to see so many of you gathered here to participate in CIBC First Caribbean's first infrastructure conference. We have been involved in many industry conferences before as a sponsor, but this is the first of its kind that we have hosted. And we hope that it sets a trend for how we see ourselves partnering with our corporate and sovereign clients and to find real solutions for the many challenges facing our region today. Themed public-private partnerships in infrastructure development and financing, this event is designed to promote public and private sector cooperation in generating investment opportunities and increasing the availability of capital for infrastructural development in the Caribbean. That our delegates list consists of person who can, as the saying goes, make things happen in our region is no accident. We hope that this forum will afford you a neat, unique opportunity to have open discourse with international and regional experts with diverse experience in infrastructure development. We believe that this event brings together the right mix of government and private sector officials, investors, professionals, industry experts, and of course ourselves, and the representatives of our parent as your trusted financial advisors who can work separately and collectively to bring to fruition the types of projects that will make a real difference in the continued development of the Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen, much has been said about the economic challenges facing our region. Much like much of the rest of the world, it continues to search for solutions for the ongoing question of how to stimulate our economies in the face of a sluggish recovery following the recession of the past several years. The evidence is clear that all sectors of our economy must work together to affect the much desired turnaround towards a path of growth. It was no surprise when only last week, the World Bank cut its global economic outlook for 2013, citing slower than expected expansion in China, India, and Brazil, and a stubborn contraction in Europe. While the bank noted that the world economy will be less volatile and is set to grow at 2.2% this year, this is slightly less than the 2.3% growth registered last year. The bank in its January forecast had expected the global economy to grow 2.4%. For us here in the Caribbean, the news continues to be bleak. The World Bank warned, quote, growth in the Caribbean continued to disappoint, decelerating to 3% in 2002 as growth decelerated in the Dominican Republic and in Haiti while Jamaica economy fell into recession. It added that overall growth in Latin America and the Caribbean region decelerated an estimated 1.4 percentage points to 3% in 2012, and added that in per capita terms, growth has fallen below 2% for the first time since the global crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, sobering news indeed. That it will take every ounce of collective expertise and creativity our region's brightest minds have to offer to devise the type of response needed to nurse the regional economy back to health in the face of continuing issues with the economies of our traditional partners and worldwide is indeed an understatement. As the premier financial services provider within the English and Dutch speaking Caribbean, CIBC First Caribbean recognizes that it has a responsibility and a duty to play an active role in fostering the types of relationships that will give birth to the levels of private public sector arrangements that will promote economic growth within our region. 
Since the start of our company in 2002, we have been embracing this role in our partnerships with our clients. Examples of this include CIBC First Group in corporate investment banking, Curacao's participation as a lender in $55 million senior secured credit facility for Nero, new uh, Curacao Wind Park in BV. The project represents a total investment of $74 million for a 30 megawatt wind farm in Curacao. The power generated by the plant represents almost 20% of Curacao's annual energy demand. Additionally, CIBC played a major role as a joint lead arranging bank and local placement agent in the 265 million financing for the redevelopment of the Solinden Pinling International Airport right here in the Bahamas, for which we were awarded the Project Finance Latin America Project Bond Deal for the year in 2010. Indeed, through our capital markets and corporate investment banking teams, we have been at the forefront of providing many other solutions to large corporates and sovereigns that have been recognized as among the most creative and impactful to our region. The expertise that exists in the Caribbean is backed by the strength and experience of our parent CIBC. We feel fortunate, therefore, to have with us over the next two days a team of experts from CIBC who will lend their knowledge to our deliberations. Let me take this opportunity, therefore, to welcome you once more to this conference. I have perused the agenda with no small amount of excitement, and I look eagerly forward to seeing the possibilities exposed at these meetings blossom into projects and programs that will flourish across the countries of the Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again, and I wish you the very best for a successful meeting. I thank you.